in hand. I think the biggest thing for him is making sure they do a better job rebounding the basketball, getting to the foul line a little bit more. Our official fire, Jarrett, Joe Lindsey, Rob Roar, getting set. And Tulane has won the tip. A good crowd on hand here inside the FedEx Forum. Plenty of time to watch this one and then get to your Super Bowl party. This is a good warm-up. It really will be, and it'll be interesting the way Memphis comes out and attacks this Tulane team, a team that really likes to dribble drive and get to the foul line, making sure that they close down the gaps. Holloway trying to split the double team. It rolls off the rim. Jaquan Walton pulling it down. David Jones leads this team in scoring for Memphis. They come out wearing the home white, but it's... Javon Quinterly, who runs the show, he's an offensive first point guard, but Penny Hardaway is really challenging him. Jordan, his scoop, no good. And a rebound goes to Tulane. That's Trey Williams. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Tulane Green Wave. You got Sion James, Colin Holloway, Kevin Cross. Now, Jalen Forbes, we were not sure we were going to see him. He went to the doctor yesterday, but he has been cleared. Nobody's gonna miss this game. This game is so exciting and means so much to both of these two teams. Aquan Tomlin, the Kansas State transfer, can't hit his first shot. They expect a lot out of him. He was a guy that they thought coming over would give them some more versatility on their front line and give them a big that could step away as well as score at the paint. Holloway had it poked away. But it'll stay here with the green wave. John is going to be real interesting to see how this game develops with how Memphis handles the dribble drives of Tulane because they've got guys that really do a good job of getting downhill with James and Holloway and Forbes and Cross. Trey Williams, his runner, rolls off, and it's Forbes had it blocked by Tomlin, but they call him for the first foul of the game. You know, when you talk about this Tulane team and people talk about them, the one word they use is energy because this Tulane team brings a lot of energy all the time. And the guy that normally leads with that, the two guys are Forbes and Cross. Talk about commitment. <laughs> this dude's getting his head shaved to distract Forbes at the free throw line. I gotta say, I think it's a better look. I tell you what, they love their Tigers here in Memphis. This is a, a incredible arena to do and play basketball in. Would you do that? Would you get your head shaved? No. Not even as a coach? No. <laughs> Start lineup for the Memphis Tigers. They've gone a little smaller. And, okay, here's a look at it. In the student section, getting his dome shaved, not even flinching. That's commitment. Either that or he's got a big date tonight. <laughs> we played almost two minutes. Just a one nothing game for Tulane. Good D by Jordan. Here comes Tomlin the other way for the Tigers. Tomlin trying to go coast to coast with the Euro, and a block is called against Tulane. Hey, yeah. you talk about the American Conference, Florida Atlantic at Wichita State. That game is going to overtime right now on ESPN2. That's why we're starting here on ESPN News. Tied at 74 apiece. I tell you. <laughs> Florida Atlantic has been in some games this year. We just did their overtime game with UAB, but that's this league. It's so competitive, so tight. Tomlin knocks them both down. First two points for Memphis. Memphis is coming with more of the full court pressure. This is part of the things Penny Hardaway was talking about when he said wanted to stand to dictate the tempo. Here's Williams from the corner, off the mark, offensive rebound is there, and up and in for Colin Holloway. He's the second-year transfer from Georgetown. We talked about uh, Tulane rebounding the basketball. That's two of them right from the beginning. That's going to be really important to their success. 
Tomlin gets his own miss. Look out! What a Tomlin with the hammer. The Williams from last year was the guy that was kind of the big that did everything. That's what they wanted Tomlin to step up and do for this team this year. Oh, double block by Memphis. Here comes David Jones the other way, picking up his dribble. And Quinterly, he will lock it in now three. Javon Quinterly, the Alabama transfer. That's the energy Penny was looking for. That's the energy this Memphis State crowd looks for when this team plays here. Get up, pressure the basketball, transition. Ross thought about it, now puts it on the deck. Hounded, good D by Jordan. Quickly the other way, touch passing inside. Tomlin got raked across the face, no whistle. He was a little, yeah, we, but even with that, he was a little off balance. If he had just come down solidly and went back up, I think he still could have scored. A slow shooting start for Tulane. They're just one for seven from the floor. Inside, Jordan with the left, puts it in. They are carving up Tulane's matchup right now. And the way that they're doing that is setting ball screens at the top of the key, then rolling the big and replacing that spot and it's creating an open opportunities for Memphis. A 7-0 run for Memphis here. At what point if you're Tulane, you gotta call a timeout to stop this? Well, <laughs> soon. Yeah, I think he's waiting for the TV timeout to come, but they can't get too far behind. Cross a step back three, my goodness. That's one way to end the run. He is so efficient in what he does. And everybody in the league just respects him because he's able to score no matter what the defense or who he's playing against. Quinnelly directing traffic. He wants to clear out on Sion James. A lot of dribbling out of Quinnelly. Double team gets it off. Tomlin and one. Nate Juan Tomlin with the patience underneath. done and it started from the defensive end which is what Penny Hardaway talked to us about uh, before the ball game. John I love the way Tomlin has stepped out and played. I mean he's given them that versatile big guy that can run the floor rebound the ball and also rim protect and then they come in with damage. So Tomlin gets a breather he's outscored two lane by himself seven to six. And now the other big Dandridge comes in along with Jordan Brown. There's the double. Williams for deep. And another offensive rebound. Williams trying it again. 0 for 2 that possession. So the second unit on the floor from Memphis. As Brown, Dandridge, and Hardaway on the floor for the first time. This is Hardaway in the corner. This is where Memphis sometimes has bogged down a little bit in making that transition from the first unit to the second unit. Shot clock winding down. Now, John, I can tell you, the reason why Penny stays with this is because as they get later on in the season, later on in the tournament, wanting to have compound screen, catch, shoot, or if somebody rolls hard to the basket, you throw a lob up at the rim and they go get it. You might look at Dandridge or Brown to try to do that. So Hardaway will inbound. They're looking for Quinterly. Catch and shoot. Oh, he beat the buzzer. And the officials are going to have to go and review it because it was a bang, bang shot. Just like I said, send a pin down, catch. So the bucket is good. And Memphis on a 13 to 3 run over the last three minutes. Memphis standing in that full court press. Tulane breaking it easily. King will back it out.
Sion James trying to get his guys organized. Blocked by Brown. But I think they're going to call Dandridge with the body first. And, and, and with Brown and Dandridge in the game at the same time, you really do have two rim protectors in there. So an update on the Florida Atlantic Wichita State game. Florida Atlantic is up by 11 in overtime. Now, we just had Florida Atlantic at UAB when the Blazers knocked them off in overtime every single night, man. But Davis told us when we were walking out the gym, he said, don't worry about us, coach. We'll be back. Oh, yeah. that, that's what he said. So that Florida Atlantic team, I mean, Dusty May has done a tremendous job taking every bullet at every turn. Memphis, woeful shooting from the free throw line, just one for four. From the field, they're 20%. Inside, Dandridge misses inside, and it's Forbes keep clearing the board. How does Tulane get into some kind of flow offensively? Either they have to do what they're trying to do, which is force the issue and continue to drive the basketball when there's not a lot of gap, or they've got to step up and drive and kick and knock down some threes. So Jonathan Pierre will come off the bench. And so a lot of size now on that front line for Memphis along with the two guards of Jones and Quinterly. John, this is something we got to keep an eye on because the substitution of Memphis, and sometimes they feel like they have substituted themselves out of runs and out of flows, and just see if they can continue. Whoa, force way up. And Pierre lost the handle on the spin, but Quinterly gets it right back. Dandridge inside goes outside pump fake Jones gets his man on his feet baseline and he'll be fouled We welcome those of you who just watched Florida Atlantic knock off Wichita State We are here in Memphis, Tennessee alongside the coach Perry Clark. I'm John Schriffen It was an early 13 to 3 run by the Memphis Tigers who have opened up this lead and right now their second unit has continued this lead and coach this is a big game for memphis back in january they were ranked as high as 10th in the country they went into new orleans they lost to tulane had a four game losing streak and look what we've seen today the student section have come ready on super bowl sunday shaving their head naquan tomlin got the party started and clearly a deep one Everything working early on for Memphis. Defensively shutting down the rim, closing up the driving lane, putting pressure, which is what Penny Hardaway said really needed to change. And here's a steal on the press. Coming the other way, laying it up and in. Jaquan Wharton. Memphis early on in warm-ups. They said to each other, this is a payback game. They lost in New Orleans by two, and they don't want to see a repeat here on their home floor. And the way they felt they needed to do that was on the defensive end, and Penny talked to us before the game and talked about it, that they were really shutting down the driving lanes, and he thought they came up with another steal right there. It, they're just not allowing Tulane to look up and see open air. Then they get a uh, turnover, and they're finishing with a basket. If you want to stay in that win column, get some turnovers, get some easy baskets. I've been a big professor of that. So Dandridge picks up his second. He'll go to the bench as Tomlin, the starter, comes back in. You look at the tournament resume. That's why this game is so important. We talked about it. They were ranked as high as 10th in the country. They lost four games in a row. But this is who they are. Causing havoc. Tulane will get it back on the other end as Cross pushing the pace. Holloway shows a cutter, but he can't finish. Tulane just two for 12 to start from the floor. Every time Tulane looks up, there's been a Memphis State player in their face with their pressure, with closing down at the rim, and their aggressiveness. Trying to get the ball inside to Brown. Now he gets a touch on the block. Turns and faces, and Cross hits him in the chops. 
Memphis has brought the energy. Can Tulane respond and bring the Mardi Gras feel with them? <laughs> That was back on January 21st. Memphis had a couple looks at it, but it was Tulane coming away. They are not ranked anymore after a four-game losing streak, but Penny Hardaway feels like his team is back on track, focused on defense. Brown inside, nice pass to Pierre. And it eventually goes through. Brown, they feel, is a young man that can really come on as they get in this, this stretch run and help them in the post area, both with his offense and his defense. He's a talented passer as well as a scorer. Look at David Jones just getting his hand on every ball. Tomlin running the break. Euro, plus the foul. Memphis is trying to run two lane out the building early on. They're using, Memphis is using their athleticism and their aggressiveness defensively, which is the way Penny Hardaway loves to play. He loves his team to create pressure, chaos, not allow teams to come in here and do what they want to do, and that's exactly what's happened so far today. Tomlin has been the number one guy that has been on top of the defense for the Memphis Tigers. A 21-3 to run. It has been impressive ever since Memphis put on this full court press. And there's another. Oh, wow. 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 Penny has to come. <laughs> That's the second time he's had this issue with this official. Uh, earlier, he called it what if Penny considered a ticky tack foul. You know? It's kind of hard, John, when a guy is watching. The guy is falling down. He has no control of, and, and to bail him out with a foul. Coaches just don't like that. They, I love officials, but coaches just don't like bailouts. You like officials now that you're a broadcaster. <laughs> I've always had a respect in life for them, yeah. but you can't bail them out. How does Tulane get in this ball game? They have to establish, I think, a number one ball handler and put guys in spots, and not everybody that gets the ball try to dribble through this pressure. Forbes off the mark. You know, that deep breath you just took told me everything I need to know. It's going to be a long day for Tulane. Brown calling for it on the post. He wants to go one-on-one -on -one against Forbes again. Spinning to his left. Shot is up and in. And Brown lets out a roar. Well, they say he's one of their most talented offensive players. He just hasn't played a whole lot. Tulane can't even get in their half-court set right now. Well, they're just passing and moving to get off, get away from the pressure. Not because they know where they want to go or how, or how they want to attack it. They have to have a game plan on how they're going to attack this pressure. Coach, Tulane is shooting under 15% to start this game. Here's Sion James trying to penetrate the kick out. And the three finally falls for Trey Williams to end the run. It was over a five-minute scoring drought for Tulane. Because guys didn't know when they were receiving the basketball. It's going to sound silly. If they were to facilitate the next pass or score the ball. And I think whenever you're getting pressed, you got to have somebody to facilitate and somebody to score. But you blocked by Cross coming over on the help D. Now Cross with a full head of steam. He's going to attack. He felt like he should have got fouled on that bucket. That's one of the few times that Tulane's been able to get the ball and drive it. And a timeout Memphis is now Tulane. Back-to-back -back buckets trying to crawl their way back into this one. It's an all Memphis early. It's both available on the ESPN app. All right, so Penny Hardaway just called that last time out. What do you think he told his squad? Don't let up. Take care of the basketball and wanted to get back with the rotation that he felt could score. And right off the timeout, a turnover. As Jalen Forbes, we weren't even sure Forbes was going to play today. He's dealing with a hamstring, a back injury, an ankle injury. Just saw the doctor yesterday to get cleared. Here he is on the floor for the green wave. And he's got the ball. He will launch it from deep off the mark. Strong board by Walton. Memphis good defense started with the half court and then it extended the full court. They want to make sure they keep the half court. Tomlin putting on the moves, had his jersey pulled, nothing pulled.
Forbes and Cross can get you back in the game in a hurry now. Here's Forbes. James will take a try from deep. Left it short, gets his own rebound. Now attacks off the bounce. See on James. One of the nicest men you'll see on the floor came and gave us a handshake before the game. But in between the lines, he is a competitor. And that's the mental letdown that Penny called a timeout for and that has plagued this Memphis team. David Jones, the St. John's transfer, leaving this team in scoring. And there's that full court press again. Jones leading it, throws it up, but off the mark, turnover. This Memphis team has been really on the prowl of exciting basketball. South Florida, Charlotte, two teams nobody, nobody thought would be at the top of the standings are here in first and third place in this conference. Teams you need to get to know come March. Florida Atlantic won a big game today in overtime at Wichita State. Yeah, and the reason why those two teams are playing so well is the balance that they have and finding great chemistry with their team and the depth that is in this league every night is a challenge. People thought Florida Atlantic was going to be a walk away with everybody returning, and it's been every anything but that. American Conference needs to get more national attention. There are so many teams who can pull off big wins every single night. Here comes Tulane on the comeback trail. And a lefty land good for Colin Holloway, plus the foul. Yeah. Memphis has gotten a little bit lackadaisical with the basketball, and that was one of the things in talking to Penny that we talked about. And now it's giving Tulane a little bit of a taste and how they can get back in the game. You know, Penny Hardaway is a tremendous competitor. He thinks his team, he wants the best out of his team every time out, like a lot of coaches, but that's the way he played. And especially from the defensive standpoint, especially from handling the basketball. A so, second personal foul on Tomlin as he'll have to take a seat as Hardaway comes back in. Yeah, he would. Yeah, the turnovers have been a problem for this Memphis team and allowing teams back in the game. And then Tomlin just gave up an easy basket right there on a silly foul. Mistakes like that come back to haunt you, and that's what Penny's teaching and trying to get through to his team. It was a 21 to 3 run early on for Memphis. And now Tulane has used the defense and the turnovers to get back in this. Yeah, you, you can't attack quick. Patience sometimes comes with it. That Memphis is doing a good job on the defensive end. They need now to operate. This is where Quinnley really needs not just to be a scorer, but step up and be a point guard and say, you go here, you go there. This is what we're running. This is the way we're attacking. Jordan, he's the Temple transfer. The big guy working the pick and roll. Nice catch in traffic, and he'll be fouled. Penny Hardaway said Nick Jordan has been really the most consistent player because he doesn't have to look for his offense, but he's one of those guys who will just scrap. He will rebound. He will block shots. He does all the little things that you don't have to ask for. And I've, probably said, I've talked about this a lot of times. You need one guy on the floor that can score, and you don't have to run a play for him, and that's Jordan. But what you have to be able to do is move the basketball. There's Hardaway from the corner, and he knocks down the three. Oh, Penny saying all we got to do is get a shot up, and we score. We keep turning the ball over. Look at that lob pass. It's picked off by Walton. Oh, met at the rim by Cross. <laughs> Tulane, let, let's flip the script a minute right now. Uh, and this is where Ron Hunter is a, is a little bit bothered by, because he is a player's coach. But when you're not being aggressive and you're being careless with the basketball, he just took King out. You got to come back. You got to meet the passes. And there's too many easy turnovers. Jordan has it ripped. And a foul called against Sion James on the reach in. Now, that was a huge block by Kevin Cross because he's challenging with two fouls at the rim. Well, he only knows one way to play. I mean, you know, Cross and Forbes. Yeah, yeah I, again, I, mean, I coached at Tulane. Those guys could have played for me every day and, and any day. I mean, they just very, very aggressive, and they always compete. So that doesn't surprise me. So Jordan to the free throw line. 
And he makes the first. We'll have the women's basketball matchup of the night on Thursday, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Only undefeated team in the nation. Number one, South Carolina. Seems like number one every year, right? <laughs> They're taking on Tennessee. Should be a great night for women's hoops. South Carolina is taking it to UConn. 42 to 25 today. Don Staley, I'm telling you, she is an amazing coach, tremendous person. And as far as getting young people to understand and to grow, become better people and players, there's nobody better as a coach. On the corner. And Trey Williams, oh, he does the silencer to the bench for Memphis. I don't know if he wanted to get the Tigers riled up. Well, the biggest thing they're doing with Williams is they're keeping him off the ball. So he's the guy getting the shots. And so far, he's come up with a couple of really good looks for him. Hardaway can't find the answer. And Jones will lay it in. Trey Williams, who just... Put the silencer to the bench of Memphis, had a chance for that rebound, could not corral it. And again, yeah, Tulane has to find who's going to initiate, who's going to shoot the basketball against this pressure. Here's Forbes on the catch and shoot, and he nails the three, and he takes a look at the Memphis bench. All the Tulane players are starting to get height now. Jordan is doubled, so Quinterly, he's now open in the corner. Look at the ball moving from Memphis. Well, what they're doing against this matchup by Tulane, they're putting a guy in the post and putting Quinterly in, running from corner to corner, so he's getting wide open looks. Jordan is normally the guy that's in the post area because he can catch it and pass it. Holloway. And a reach-in foul called against Jordan. Let's take a look at that Trey Williams three. And look at what he does to celebrate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to need a few more of those. <laughs> Williams before that shot was one for seven. So not sure that was the wisest move. Really. It looks like Tulane right now is about to change the defense a little bit. And again, the growth of Quinterly is going to have to be in his recognition of being able to run the team. He can flat out score the ball. He defensively, he's gotten better. Now he's got to be able to put people in their positions and understand change of defenses and things like that as you get closer to the tournament time. You know, we talked with Penny Hardaway before the game today, and he was very real and open and honest with us. He said during that four-game losing streak here in the American, he said, we had some chemistry issues, and he had to address it with his team, particularly his point guard, Javon Quinterly. He said, you have got to be more vocal. All the point guards we have had here in the past, when you think about Alex Lomek, Kendrick Davis, those guys were just fiery. And that's what he's asked for out of Quinterly. He's brought it, and they've won their last two. And especially when you're playing for one of the greatest college point guards ever and one of the greatest NBA. I mean, the guy had a doll named after My goodness, that's how good he was. So, you know, and, and, but that to give Quinterly something to learn and to get better, and that's why he came here. Jones. Nice pump fake. Defense doesn't know where they're at right now. And it's Jones cleaning it up underneath for the football. You know, John, but this is what I like. I like the pace of that offense. They didn't rush. They passed up shots. They didn't take the first open look. And it made them a lot more effective, and they were able to finish. Sion James, the step back. And Walton pulls it away. Inside, Brown's calling for it on the post. Lowers his shoulder, and he'll be fouled. Yeah. So many weapons inside for this Memphis Tiger squad. I love the pace of the basketball game. Memphis is in control, control. Memphis State. But what he did for the community by staying home and not going somewhere else, he helped bridge a lot of racial gaps here in Memphis, and everybody has given him credit for that. And then he developed basketball here in Memphis besides getting this fan base. And everybody will tell you, this place is a beautiful place, and the fan base is, is tremendous. And then he got a chance to coach who I think was one of the all-time great 
great college basketball players, Penny Hardaway. That was like his son. So he means so much to so many, and he's just a cornerstone. And you can't have this month go by and not understand the uh, full appreciation of Larry Finch and his impact in basketball here in Memphis and nationally. And don't forget. He was a baller, too. I oh, mean, he yeah. could get with the best of them. 1973 led this Memphis State squad to the national championship against UCLA's Bill Walton. And Larry Finch's jersey hangs in the Raptors here at the FedEx Forum. He could flat out play in one of the nicest human beings you ever want to meet. I mean, many times when we would come in to play, he called me late at night and said, Perry, let's get together, let's have a burger, let's just talk some ball. And I learned a lot about not just Memphis basketball, but a lot about being just a good human being from Larry Finch. What was it like when you were the head coach at Tulane? I mean, <laughs> no, seriously, being one of the pioneers as a black head coach in this country, describe what it was like for you. Uh, you know, you worry so much about your guys, and you wanted to make sure you set a really good example. So th the Ron Hunters, the Penny Hardaway would have a, a, a place to ascend to and take their place because there was so much that they had to give. So, you know, you felt an obligation uh, and a purpose. And, uh, you know, Leonard Hamilton's still going. Kelvin Sampson's still going. I mean, there's so many uh, really, really talented guys that came along when I did. David Jones, and he gets the shooter's roll. That is a three for David Jones. Parker, let me just say, it is an honor to broadcast with you. Alongside the coach, Perry Clark, I'm John Trippin. You see Memphis here with a 42-26 lead over Tulane. The Green Wave trying to get back into this. Under three minutes here in this first half. Memphis is doing a really good job right now defensively, not getting Tulane any driving lanes. They gave up an offensive rebound and a foul. But the pace that they're playing with, John, you know, they've got to lead. They're not playing with a panic pace, and that's great. Ron Hunter, he's done a great job at Tulane. Tulane was in a, a, a very difficult situation when he came in. And the biggest thing he's done is he brought the fan base back. He brought good kids in there, and they play with a level of enthusiasm. I and mean, Penny Hardaway, uh, I mean, he's just an outstanding coach. I used to say when he played, you, ne you never stopped Penny Hardaway. You just survived him because he was just that good. And that young man, he can just flat out coach. You know what's interesting about how he's developed as a coach? He's now being known as the guy who will get you to the NBA or the pros. No, he's getting a lot of transfers from other schools, point guards, shooting guards, guys who maybe have been through the draft process. They've gone to the pre-draft camps, taken their names out, and then they're saying, how do I get to that next level? Penny Hardaway's the guy who will get me there. Yeah, but, but what he's also done is he put himself second. And a lot of coaches, it's hard, especially great players, to put themselves second. But he puts these kids above his name and his, his image and everything because he wants nothing but good things for them. And he gets frustrated when they don't work as hard to be able to accomplish those things. Forbes is double, picks up his dribble, and he finds help. They get it back to Forbes in the corner, short, rebound to Brown. They've done a really good job today on Forbes as far as not letting him just be able to isolate and dominate the ball by driving. Forbes, one for five from the floor today. Here's a deep three by Pierre. In and out. Under two minutes to play in this first half and dominated by Memphis. James all alone at the top and that one halfway down. That was one of the best looks they got, but sometimes when you haven't seen a whole lot of good looks, even the good ones don't go when you have one. Brown with a skip pass. He'll find Pierre off the deflection kick out. Quinterly, good pump fake, gets to the elbow. Memphis getting every 50-50 ball right now, and a foul on the penetration. But again, I, I, I keep talking about the pace of the game. Memphis is playing like they have a lead, not like they're behind and on fire. And so they're sharing the basketball, they're getting good looks, and they're able to continue this lead.
you see Memphis as a team who crawls their way back into this NCAA tournament picture? Well, they've got a lot of games left to play without question. And the way the league is playing and the way that um, – that they, the opportunity they have, where they got Florida Atlantic twice, just in and of itself, that's going to be very, very special. And the American Hoop Showcase highlights top conference matchups with enhanced coverage across digital platforms. This is the next showcase for the men's hoops. We got Memphis facing off against North Texas on Thursday at 8 Eastern. If you're an American Athletic Conference fan, you know you got to have it. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com slash AAC, or download the ESPN app. North Texas is up by four at the half right now over SMU. You know, every time I look at the scoreboard in the American, nothing really surprises me anymore. No, the, the balance is really there. Under a minute to play, six on the shot clock. There's Williams right in front of the Memphis bench, set one in and out. What do you want to see out of this Memphis possession? A good shot. I mean, I, I, I just think they're playing really good offensive basketball. They start to settle down, not a lot of turnovers. Do you want to get a good shot? There's Brown calling for the ball. Now he's backing down his defender, Holloway, with the left off the mark. And it's Tulane with 10 seconds to work, and Jones will foul cross. That's what you did not want to see. <laughs> That, that you didn't want to miss, but you didn't really didn't want to foul. And what that does is it sends cross to the line to shoot two in the double bonus. This young man has really worked hard on his game cross. Um, you know, he, he went to a couple of NBA uh, camps in the last year to put his foot in the water and all like that. He, he has a lot of energy. His versatility offensively makes him awful difficult to be able to guard. You know, the biggest thing that Ron Hunter said about his star, Kevin Cross, he said for the first time in a few years, he's actually healthy. I mean, he has been playing through so many injuries the last few seasons, and now we're starting to see the player that he can be. He's kind of like that Draymond Green, that forward point who can really get the offense started. Well, I tell you what, he, he works extremely hard, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people in New Orleans, and they all rave about what a nice young man he is, which means a lot to me. So a 30-second timeout. We will take it with them when we come back. I'll... If I'm Penny, I'm just saying I just want to get in halftime, get back out here, and not let anything mess up the groove because we're playing real good basketball. And here's the funny thing, John. Sometimes 20 minutes change the way these guys think. So that would be my concern. Here goes Quinterly. Six seconds. David James. Cutting. it down. Two seconds to play. James will get off a half-court heave. Oh, it is Memphis ending the first half with some fireworks, taking a 46-29 lead into the locker room. Getting easy shots on kickouts for three. They've not been able to do that so far. You know, it's Mardi Gras right now in New Orleans. I asked Ron Hunter, I said, how is that impacting your program? He said, you know, we can't participate in it because we have to be locked into the basketball program because our guys see it. They can't participate, but if they can pull this one off, it'll be a party coming home to New Orleans for Tulane. Inside to Tomlin, a little English, scoops it in. And again, the way Memphis is attacking uh, Tulane and taking their time is really impressive and not rushing. Cross penetrating inside to Holloway, and he's able to finish in traffic. So a nice first possession for Tulane. You know, Holloway is one of those guys. He has kind of fit in uh, with 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 Cross and James and Forbes as being that guy that you don't have to run a lot of stuff for, but can really score around the basket. Holloway leads the way for Tulane today with 11 points. There they go inside to the paint again, Jordan, and he is fouled by Holloway. That's his second. To the, one of the 
pluses for Tulane is their size and their interchangeable parts. So when they play their defense, they can switch. When they're on the perimeter, they can drive the basketball, and all of them have the similar skill set. Defensively, though, they're small, and Memphis is trying to take advantage of that and throwing the ball inside. And it's interesting because when you look around the American Conference, Penny Hardaway told us, for the most part, most teams play small ball. They have one big and four guards who are smaller playing on the perimeter. And, t and this Memphis team, they can basically play either way. They could go big or they can match you small. But to me, John, but yeah, but that's about skill. That's not about size. You can have a guy 6'8", six, 6'9", six, and if you can put the ball on the floor and guard smaller guys, then that's an advantage. James open from the wing, and he cans it. Sion James, his first three, he's got five. And that's one of the things Penny's questioning. Okay, now who's got it? I mean, we go from our full court pressure to our half court defense. And again, Memphis's run started with really good half court defense. Jones, good pass inside to Tomlin, his runner off the mark. You know, this is something we've seen in the second half from Memphis. In the South Florida game, they were up big lead. In the Temple game, they were up big lead. And they had a tendency of letting teams come back in the second half. Again, I tell you, when I had a lead at halftime, I just wanted to hurry up and get out there and continue to play. I didn't want to talk too much. I didn't want to get in their space because guys all of a sudden can, as quickly as they pick it up, oh, move it. Tomlin, the two-handed block. Yeah, this is what Tomlin brings. This is what they've been waiting for him to do out of that four spot. Defensively be able to close the rim. Atlantic at UAB game. Two guys getting a double check, and it was UAB who was able to use that to their advantage. Could this be something that could spark a comeback for Tulane? It could. Here's four. He just got teed up, and it's Jones pulling it down. But I think the situation is a little different. On the outside, Forbes called with a reach in. So that's the third personal on Jalen Forbes. Yeah. And he came over to talk to Coach Hunter. I, I, I don't, maybe he thought he had four. Grinley's telling him to reset at the top of the key with David Jones. Jones will take a deep one. Okay. <laughs> Now, now, now Jones winds up saying something, and now Hunter's talking to Jones. And Jordan called for the reach in. <laughs> All right, let's see what happened at the end of this. Well, well, I, Jones answered all the talk by by knocking down a three, and then that that got Ron Hunter upset that Jones was then talking, and at some point. You just got to play the game. And Ron Hunter's pointing to the refs like, you're going to allow him to talk to me like that? It's about to get interesting here in Memphis. Torres has it stripped. Here comes Tom on the other way. Jordan tiptoes the sideline, stays in bounds to Tom. He lays it in. It's been Memphis responding after the double text. Their largest lead of the game. going on the key to the game is simply this that defensively Memphis is playing in the gap not a lot Devils, Saturday at 8 Rangers Islanders Sunday at 3 the NHL Stadium Series on ABC and ESPN plus we're just three minutes into this second half but it feels like a pivotal moment in this game for Tulane Quinterly off the bounce side of the backboard it's tipped out by Jordan did not hit the rim, so shot clock continues to wind. Inside, it's Tomlin, and if that's on Forbes, it is. That's his fourth. Yes. And what Memphis is going to now is the offense will predicate of more space, and, and uh, Tulane's a little, Forbes especially, is a little frustrated right now.
You know, we talked at the top about Tulane being in so many close games. You can only be in so many close games and not get a little bit of frustration. So that's natural. But you've got to be able to monitor it because there's a lot of basketball left to play in this game and in the season. I mean, when you look at this Memphis team, six of their final eight games are against the top six teams in this American Conference. So the conference is still up for grabs. Jordan, good D. Without question, Tomlin has been a guy that's really stepped up and done a really good job. You know. Really shot off the mark, but it's tracked down again by Walton. Another offensive rebound. Right now, Memphis is just playing with a really good spacing and flow offensively. Nice pocket pass inside by Quinterly. Kick out. Jones launching. Got it. <laughs> Jones is a perfect four for four from downtown. He leads all scores with 19. Driving baseline for a with a block. And he commits the foul. But the biggest thing has been the way Memphis has moved the ball in the half court. You know, they have some very exciting women players, and they just bring a certain level of, a different level of energy and enjoyment for the fans. I'll tell you what, the women's game has stars right now. I mean, it is phenomenal to watch women's basketball. What can you say to your team if you're Ron Hunter at this point? Well, I, I think you've got to try to figure out something that will work consistently. What I mean by that, either a defense that's going to work consistently, an offense that's going to work consistently, and then mentally getting them focused to play at a certain level that will allow you to have success. Now, they've gone into their matchup zone, and let's see the way Memphis handles that. They've been really spacing the floor. David Jones, the offensive rebound, and he'll kick out and reset the offense. This is Tomlin from the wing, short, cross with the board. Tulane looking to run, and the lay-in goes. You can't give up layup stuff. But that's what Tulane wants to do. They want to try to push it, get easier shot. This communication as Dandridge was trying to direct traffic and didn't see the ball. Well, Dandridge was looking... Well, he was looking at Penny and, and not his point guard, and it wasn't a recognition. We talked earlier, what you don't want to see happen right now for Memphis is turning the ball over. I, you know, getting quality shots, and that's why I keep talking about their ball movement. is so important in sharing the basketball and the pace in which they're playing. You know, something we've seen recently out of Coach Hardaway. As Holloway, nice take and a foul. Let's get another look at that drive. Again, that's one of the few times. You see the gap right there that he's able to drive through? That's one of the few times that Holloway or any of the Tulane players have been able to see a gap where they can drive the basketball because that's what they do extremely well. Holloway, a perfect five for five from the free throw line already today. And he stays perfect. 14 points to lead the way for Tulane. A 7-0 two-lane run right now as Dandridge puts an end to that one in close. That's what he gives. He's so big and so strong that Memphis has decided that they're just going to try to feed the ball into the low block. Crossing no man's land will reset. What a blow by him. Dandridge just takes it off the glass. But then he gives it back. King out ahead of the pack, tracked down by Dandridge. Good no call, and Sion James can't keep it alive. And eventually, after all of that, it'll be Memphis ball. John, Memphis has gone the last couple of times back to, to a zone. I think they have to go back to their man. They were much more effective in the man. Great block right there below the rim. Legal block there, there by Dandridge. Dandridge has not played much tonight because we've seen Penny Hardaway shorten his bench. 
Inside of Jones, missing him close. That'll be Tulane ball. Dandridge has only played four minutes off the bench. Really, he's become their ninth guy as Penny Hardaway really going to an eight-man rotation. He has, and, and I think part of the things that he was concerned with when they, when they went on the losing streak was they was going too deep into his rotations. Williams off the bounce, wild shot off the backboard. It'll stay with the green wave. You know, sometimes, John, you can go too deep into your rotation and mess up your flow. And I think Penny trying to shorten the bench right now is getting into that February run of who he's going to stay with. Williams off the inbound, curling, shooting, and he rolls in. And he looks and points to a fan. Tomlin getting into it with everybody today. Trey Williams. James calls for the high screen from Cross, and he'll take a three. A 20-point lead for Memphis. Inside to Dandridge, and he's fouled by Holloway. Dandridge really trying to run the floor, and again, every time Memphis is getting the ball, they're trying to hit the wing and go from the wing straight into the low post before Tulane can set up their matchup zone. Even down 20, Trey Williams knows how to have some fun out here. <laughs> <laughs> so first half, he gave a little shush sign to the Memphis bench. And then this half, pointed into and had a little fun with the fans sitting courtside. He's a little too active with things that aren't really happening on the court. He's also 4 for 12 from the floor. <laughs> So here was the first half. <laughs> and then here's his last one here in the second half. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, like, you, you see that? You I'm saw sure, that? I'm sure he's got a big social media following. Hey, it's college basketball. I like he's having fun. Here's Williams with the rock. The lane opens up. And Williams takes advantage of it. And Penny's got to be shocked. How does the guy drive the middle of the floor in a half court set? And that's why he's calling timeout. I mean, he's trying to establish his half court defense, which has allowed him to have this win. And he's not looking to go backwards again. Joe Lenardi, he's got Memphis at the next four out. So they've got some work to do. But, Coach, with plenty of games left here in this regular season and then the American Conference Tournament, is Memphis an NCAA tournament team? I think they have the potential. They've got to play their way in. I mean, and the way they've got to play their way in is playing consistent basketball. I like a lot of the things that they're doing here today. Dan Rich inside, and he throws it down. Nice dive from Quinterly. And a lot of it has to do with the way Quinterly is playing. Everybody knows about him offensively, and he's trying to be a floor leader here today. Memphis has 23 field goals and 18 assists. I really like this pass. He's been watching a little bit of his coach play half-court offense and everything. That's the way you get the ball to the big guy where he can do something with it. And that's what he needs to be, to be a lead guard if you be a good NCAA team. James sets the screen for Cross. He's got Hardaway on him. Turnaround jumper is short. Foul inside on the <laughs> rebound. He just pushed the guy with two hands and said, what did I do? <laughs> you mean you can't do that? I'm not with these officials. There's some things you may be able to get away with, but a two-hand push is not one of them. Baseline opens up as Colby King lays it in. Well, Memphis has had some defensive lapses, but they still hold on to a 20-point lead. Quinterly probing, and it's blocked out of bounds by Cross.
moving the ball around, getting everybody involved is going to be really important. Hardaway had his shot blocked by King, and now it's Tulane looking to push it. Forbes playing with four fouls back on the floor. No look pass to King. Scoop shot rolls off. Inside, Dandridge, outside, Quinterly. And Tulane with the outlet. It's Forbes, one on one. And he'll be fouled. They call it on Dandridge. That's his fourth. Tulane with time, down by 20. Carter, Jay Lee into the world. Congratulations to Jalen Forbes. Coach, what must that be like for that young man? I'm not a father, so I don't know. You are a proud father. The new responsibility is to be a student athlete and now a father. Well, it changes everything. Um, and when it doesn't change, you think it changes. Because uh, the expectations, you figure you got to be more of this or more of that. And you worry more about your future and things like that. But I know he's really well supported by the Tulane community and Coach Hunter and the staff. We talked to Coach Ron Hunter. He couldn't be more excited for this young man. And really all his, te his team, he sees himself as a father figure to these guys. And a family here at Tulane. Cutting baseline is Brown. And he gets it to go. Plus the whistle. Jordan Brown, who's been in and out of this lineup for Memphis, he could be a key factor in this stretch run in conference play. Without question, if they can find a way to play him and his attitude brings what they need at the, to close out the season. And a lot of times guys don't play not because of their talent, but because of their attitude or what they think that they should bring to the team. Lang goes reverse, can't go coast to coast with it. Walton tried to no look it inside. He finds Tomlin and Glenn says, give me that. They try to put Walton at the point and allow him to initiate. You know, outside of that really first Five, six minute stretch where, two, where Memphis opened up the big lead. Tulane's been able to kind of play shot for shot with Memphis the rest of this game. Well, they have, but again, some of this has to do with Memphis turning the ball over. I don't think they're quite effective when Walton is at the point as they are obviously when Quinnelly is in the game. It was a 21 to three run for Memphis early on in this game to break it open. And Tulane has not been able to get close since. Stripped from behind and a foul on Glenn, that's his third. And that'll be a one and one for Memphis. And I think this gives Penny a chance, John, to work on some things, okay? Because as you get into the tournament, there's gonna be time for the conference in the NCAA when Quinley needs a blow. Now, how do I manage my offense? And if Walton's gonna be the guy to step up to do that, am I gonna slide Jones over and let him help to do that? But this is the these are the questions that you need to be working on to figure out. Well, we also have a few weeks left before the conference tournament in March, but there's a new twist this year with the American. There's an added day to conference tournament play. So if you are one of the top four teams at the end of the regular season, you get a double buy in the conference tournament, which is so valuable. Well, it really is. But again, it just gives you more time to again work because you're going to have to play with Quinley off the floor. And Quinley has played really well today. Who runs my team? his double, tries to dribble out of it. He'll find James, sets his feet. But can't knock it down. Under 10 minutes to play here in the second half. Walton in transition. And there's Nick Jordan again. He doesn't get a lot of the credit or the fanfare, but he does all the dirty work for this Tiger squad. He really does. He's a very, very unselfish player. And when you talk to Penny one-on-one, -on -one, he really appreciates what's, what he brings. Holloway on the follow. He'll be fouled and go to the free throw line. 
Boy, Holloway works hard. I tell you what, they don't run a whole lot of plays for him, and he doesn't acknowledge the fans and all like that, but he's always on the glass. He's knocking down open jump shots. He really plays hard. You know, we were talking about the format for this American Conference Tournament. How bonkers is it going to be this year, knowing that any team can get beat? Four days of conference action in Fort Worth? My goodness. John, it is, but for coaches, we always felt like that. So it's a matter of now. We just got the stats to back it up because it's happening. But, you know, whenever you go to your conference tournament, you always feel like, boy, we don't play well, we can go home early. So a couple other games going on in the American right now. We got North Texas up over SMU. 63 to 60 and Charlotte right now up by one run. so a lot of close games in the American going on Walton's jumper short and it's pulled away by Holloway Forbes has not been able to get on track today with four fouls Holloway does keep it alive. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Forbes just one for seven, five points. Make that eight <laughs> right on cue. Forbes, he can get hot quick. He can. I'm telling you, he and Cross, they just really, they're, they're tough guards because they're able, because of their skill set, to do so many things. And this two-lane team depends on them to do those things. Brown just spins away from everybody. Which way did he go? <laughs> Ron Hunter looked at Holloway and put his hands up and said, please, at least try to stay in front of him. Sian James, the nice dish from Cross. But if you're Tulane, you can't trade buckets at this point. No. There's Brown again on the inside. They give him the double team. And he still gets away to the free throw line. <laughs> and a technical foul called against Tulane. It looked like they gave it to Kevin Cross. I, they, they go in the ground. He gets shoved a little bit there. He gets pushed there. And I just think the frustration from the day and the physicality of the day has just kind of worn down this two-lane team. I didn't see much, but clearly it could have been one of those magic words. It was on Sion James, I apologize, not Kevin Cross. It, but but it, it, it's the same virus. John, I mean, it's been a very frustrating day for the Tulane team from the standpoint that Memphis is in the half court has really pounded the ball inside and Brown has been very physical and very aggressive and, uh, and Tulane, I certainly probably feel they haven't gotten the same calls. But you cannot play with that frustration. Yeah. And now Ron Hunter is getting into the officials. And Penny Hardaway just says, he's just laughing at him. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's... What are those coaching conversations like? Uh, there's a message in all of them. A little subtle, we're going to see you again? Yeah. <laughs> We've seen four technicals handed out already this game to both teams. There's four from the corner. And a foul on the <laughs> rebound called against Memphis. Brown has really been a major fact. Break the all-time scoring record in NCAA history at home against Michigan. She needed 39 heading into the day today. She had 31 in the game, and it was actually in a loss against Nebraska as Jazz Shelley hit her with the you can't see me celebration, <laughs> which is pretty cold-blooded. You think that place will be sold out? Oh, my <laughs> I, I'm reading on Twitter already. 
that the get-in price is over $500. Wow. The power of women's hoops, it is something special right now. Brown calling for it on the block. He's banging inside with Glenn. Playing two lane, you're better playing going man to man. When Memphis went zone, they drove past them. And James called for the travel. And I was just telling you, when, when, when you play man and you're in the gap, it takes away what they want to do. When you go zone, they find those gaps and they're able to attack. This two-lane team is as good as anybody attacking gaps. David Jones will line one up. And he gets another offensive rebound. So for David Jones, his sixth double-double of the season, 19 points, 10 rebounds, and a quick timeout by Memphis. How about the job David Jones has done? And he came in known as a C. He's trying to make it a teachable moment. David Jones leads the American in scoring almost 22 points per game. But Penny's telling him, you got to make sure it comes within the offense. Brown, he's having to work hard. And given the ISO, he finds Jones in the paint, left it short. Under seven minutes to play in the second half. Glenn will try one from deep, and he'll knock it down. How about Greg Glenn, the sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida? Offensive execution is very, very important right now. They're trying to keep the ball away from Jones as much as they possibly can. Quinterly, they went under the screen, and he makes <laughs> he has really played exceptionally well today. I like his pace. I like his poise. Quinterly, 16 points, four for six from downtown. James off the bounce will kick out Glenn. And then that's the shot Tulane has to make if they're going to take away the gaps. Inside they go with Brown, spinning away, and Glenn takes it. James lowers his shoulder and gets the and one. Foul called against David Jones. They had a good steal, and that's what James does. I mean, he drives the basketball. When he gets the ball, you really have to stay in the gap. He, he's big, strong, he finishes well at the rim. So Tulane not even putting anybody on the free throw line with James, sending all their defenders back, knowing they need to get stops with just under six minutes to play. Again, offensively for Memphis right now is really the key. You don't want to take your foot off the pedal, but you want to be very selective offensively in what you get. Quinterly trying to dance with it. Now they go to Walton on the wing, and it's Greg again with, a, excuse me, Glenn again with another rebound. I'm surprised they hadn't tried to get the ball back inside. Here's the cutter James, but he went through his hands. Turnover. Wow. What? What is? I think we got another double tech. I didn't see that. I didn't see I, that. I, 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 I didn't see that. I, I, I thought. I, I, I thought that was correspondence there between James and Williams. I thought that they were uh, 
upset that he didn't catch the ball and he was trying to say hey you got need you to catch that one so Quinterly and Williams Received double text as James now called for the reach in. All right, so let's watch in the lane as Quinterly and Williams said something to each other. Yeah. It was one of those things you had to be there to really understand. I don't know. I, mean, I, I did see something at the half. When both teams were walking off the court, Williams for Tulane said something to Quinterly, and they were exchanging words even going into the locker room. Yeah, but on that play right there, it really wasn't anything. It was more so James and Williams saying, we got to coordinate better. I need you to cut to the ball faster. Was more of the conversation that Williams comes out the game. Now, in fairness, we were on the court. We don't know what. That's what said. I'm saying. The officials I mean, were right there. Memphis come back with the full court pressure. Cross inside. Kevin Cross. Nine points today to go along with seven rebounds. Memphis keeps working out of this 2 1 2 set. And out of the 2 1 2 set, they're trying to get a screen right there at, by Jordan at the high post and let him roll. Friendly finds his spot, the mid-range off, and James pulls it down. This game is not over yet, Coach. Inside they go to Holloway, and he'll be fouled. Both teams in the double bonus, shooting two free throws the rest of this game. And Tulane with an opportunity to cut into this lead even more. Again, earlier in the season, and I don't disagree with you, John, earlier in the game, though, the thing that made them effective to Memphis was they had a guy in the low post that could score in the low post area. They don't have that guy in there now as they've taken Dandridge out. Here's our next ESPN Big Monday doubleheader. Wake Forest visits Cameron Indoor Stadium to go against ninth-ranked Duke. That's at 7 Eastern. Then, number 4, Kansas. Number 23, Texas Tech. Should be another amazing night of hoops. Both available on the ESPN app. So the lead is down to 15. As we approach four minutes to play in regulation. There's the handoff to Quinterly. He's bumped. And the whistle called on Glenn, his fourth. Media timeout on the floor. Does Tulane have one more push left in him? Do here down 15. I think they're doing a lot of good things. They're driving the ball to the basket. They're getting to the foul line greater in the last four minutes than they did earlier in the game. Both teams in the double bonus will be shooting two free throws the rest of this ball game. Quinterly now 18 points, four rebounds, and five assists for Memphis point guard. If, if Memphis is going to play this zone, they're really going to have to pack it and continue to guard the gaps. Forbes, he'll take a deep three. Tipped out. Forbes, another chance, this time from the corner, and it goes. So Forbes, now two for eight from downtown. He's in double figures with 11. Excuse me, three for eight. This two-lane team is not going to go away now. Memphis is going to have to handle the basketball. Jordan does keep it alive, and Jones calls for it. It's by his man. All the way to the rim. David Jones with a strong take. King. He will hit 
with the three as Tulane just won't go away. No, they won't. There's a lot of fight in this Tulane basketball team. Down 13. This is the closest they have been since the first half. And a reach in on King. Jones right there. You see him drive the baseline. What a way to finish. He wants to make sure there's no question on that. That's his explosiveness. And John, they Memphis has played really well without Jones really looking like he's dominated this basketball game. He's got good stats, but he hasn't really dominated. Jones right now matching his season average. He's got 22 points. 8 of 11 from the floor. So efficient to go along with his 10 rebounds. And I think that's what Penny's trying to do is control the game offensively and putting the ball in his hands at Quinnally at the end of the shot clock. Penny Hardaway telling his team to pack it in defensively. Forbes will lean in. Nice job by Hardaway to back away from the shooter. The crowd here at the FedEx Forum loving the effort here on Super Bowl Sunday. Quinterly. Foul on Jones, that'll be his fourth, and he's like, really? Shot stop. I didn't I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Well, the crowd saw the replay, so they're letting the officials have it. <laughs> right now, again, handling the pressure, getting the ball in. Memphis is anticipating Tulane fouling. So they come in with more guards. They very much want the ball in Quinley's hands and Jones's hands. Lead down to 13, under two minutes to play. Here's the full court press by Tulane. Pierre picks up his dribbles trapped, but he finds Quinterly. Quinterly one on one against James. He'll find Jones from the corner. And Tulane with a three can cut this lead to 10. There's the three by King, and it rolls in. Yeah. Coach, we got a ball yeah. game here. Closest they have been since it was 16 to 6 in the first half. Throwing it up. And it's Jonathan Pierre with the oop. That's the way to break the pressure. Tulane has done what they needed to do and knock down some threes because that was the only way they were stopping this defense. Jones doing a little of everything today with the block, cross with the reach and foul, and that should just about do it. We've often said these games the American are never over until they're over, and this was one of them. It looked like Memphis had complete control, but Tulane was able to knock down some threes. There you see the drive, good defense right there. Jones has done a little bit of everything today. And I've really been impressed with Quinterly. And what I mean, not just his scoring as he misses his foul shot. I'm a jinx for everybody. But the fact, the way that he's run this team. He's got everybody involved offensively. He didn't turn the ball over. Defensively stepped up. And I thought the Memphis defense, especially early in the game, really dictated the, the course of this basketball game. So 
Quinterly misses them both. 12 point lead. Noah Stansbury in the game defending. And he's got the steal. Noah Stansbury does not get to play much. And this crowd here at the FedEx Forum showing their appreciation. <laughs> Tulane will not foul, final seconds. And Memphis will hold on for a 90-78 win as the Tigers have now won three in a row. This is looking like...